hey, some of it was it was like running a crack house sometimes, a lot of prostitution, but also like some hardworking families that were just really like down on their luck. And can you give me like further detail on the prostitution? I'm just curious. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Welcome to The Insiders. My name is Sarah and I have over a decade of experience in the hospitality industry. Everything from budget motels to high-end boutiques. Each episode, me and my co-host Rob will bring you a detailed account from another insider from the hotel, hospitality, and tourism industries. In this episode, we chose to forgo having a guest to allow me time to talk about some of my experiences managing a budget extended stay property. Because who doesn't love spending their Christmas filling out incident reports? So I'm working at this extended stay and I put on my stupid sparkly Santa hat and I'm pulling in to start my day on Christmas day. (laughs) And there's three cop cars in the parking lot. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, God damn it. (laughs) You're just, you're pissed off because all the cops are also wearing Santa hats and you thought you were original. Is that the problem? Yeah. (laughs) You know, you show up to a party and someone else is wearing your shit. It's just embarrassing. I tell me about it. (laughs) So, so immediately I'm just like, here we go. And I go inside and there's an officer. And at this point, we're on a first name basis because this property is just hell on earth. And he's like, Sarah, there was an armed robbery. I'm like, on Christmas, like, what is going on? So the story I got from the guests and they were long term residents there basically was they were out at a club and they met this other couple and they were like, you know, let's continue the party back at our hotel room. So they bring them back. And as soon as this couple was in their space, they pulled a gun and they robbed them at gunpoint and then they bolted. So I bring the officer behind the desk and we look at the footage and like, you can see them clear as day. We had cameras all over that place. We could see their car and everything. So he, you know, took the info and leaves. I'm just trying to get on with my day. It's Christmas day. I'm still wearing- But what about the people? Are the people living there? They're still just living there just hanging out? Like just Got what I guess I don't know. I'm mean, what else are you gonna do, right? But it's like the long term stay people got robbed, right? So they're there, they got robbed, yeah, but that's their home, so they're not packing up and going. Like, I was recently at a hotel and, and it, there was a storm and I just left because the lights went out, you know what I mean? Like, but these people have nowhere to go, right? They're, <laughs> no, they're, this is they're their there house, because yeah, that's where they live, right? And so they get robbed yeah. and cops are there, okay? So now. It's Christmas. Is this Christmas morning or is this Christmas yeah, evening? It's so, still okay. Christmas morning and I'm just going about my day. I got laundry to do. I got rooms to check. I got people to check in and check out. And um, I turn the corner and in all of my Christmas spirit or lack thereof. And I come face to face with the guy, the gunman. He was back in my hotel. Uh, Wait, what? You know, They're yeah. just hanging out at the hotel? Like, did they come back out after robbing and use the money to rent the room? <laughs> like... This is, I didn't know yet. I had no idea. So the rule was you were not supposed to let anyone into the property that, you know, wasn't, didn't have a key. But there was this one jackass staying there at the time that would let fucking everybody in through the back door. And I, his name was Wayne. I'll never forget. And I'm like, dude, you can't just let people up in here. It's like a security issue. But he was like, Wayne, man. Yeah, fucking Wayne. So, and he was like a chain smoker. So he's always outside smoking, Uh, always by the door, just letting people in like the worst doorman on the face of the earth. So yeah, I I turned the corner and I'm like, holy shit, this is the guy that I just, you know, printed pictures of for the police in three hours earlier. So I'm like, holy shit. I'm sure that they could see it all over my face. I'm just shitting bricks, but right. I tried to play it cool, rocking the glittery Santa hat. I'm like, hi. Um, Merry Christmas. <laughs> 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 Baby Jesus. The dude's wearing um black sweatpants and he's got his hands like on his junk, but it was the gun. He had the uh, gun right Jesus by his... Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, and, and I don't the, mean Jesus Christ as in this is Christmas. I mean Jesus <laughs> Christ as in, oh my gosh. Yeah. So, the, and the girl that was the other robber is with him and she has, Rob, my guest purse on her arm. <laughs> and I'm like, hi guys. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> That's I'm insane. Like, I go, yeah. So I'm trying not to absolutely shit my Christmas cookies out at that point. And I'm just like, hi, guys. Um, I'm like, Merry Christmas. I'm like, I don't uh, recognize you. Are you here to check in? And they're like, no, uh, we were with some friends last night and they left their purse in our car. We're just here to return it. And I'm like, oh, do you know what? their room number? Yeah. So I'm like, oh, do you know their room number? And they're like, yeah, it's up on the fourth floor. I'm like, well, I can't have you go up there because you're not guests. Can you just go wait in the lobby? They're like, yeah, okay. 
So I let them out in the lobby, which the door would lock them into the lobby. Well, not into the lobby. They could get out the front door, but it they weren't they would no longer be in, you know, the property. Oh, like there was like back to where rooms and hallways were like were like locked, yeah. up, like locked off or whatever. This sounds yeah. like this is not like really like a hotel. It sounds more like I don't know, <laughs> some sort of like low security prison. This like, it kind of was. I mean? like, it fucking you know. kind of was. So yeah, I just I'm like, okay, well, just have a seat in the lobby and I'll I'll give them a call for you. They go back out there and I'm like, at least they're not roaming the halls, right? At least mm. they're not going to go up. So wait, do you know how many hours have passed since the robbery? I guess the cops are still there. So the robbery had probably just happened within the last hour, like probably got robbed. Well, they're still on the property unbeknownst to everybody. Cops come. No, no, they did them. leave. No, no, they, they left. legitimately came back. Like she's not lying. Yeah. Like she was bringing the purse back. She was legitimately returning the purse. Yeah, I'm so like, okay. Yeah. Now I got to know where the story goes. <laughs> now I'm so I'm so confused. I thought like they were hanging out like in like the ice machine closet or something like that, and the cops just didn't bother to no. check. And like, oh, okay, so they literally were bringing back. So this they purse, legitimately. This purse but they somehow got in yeah. because of, because of fucking Wayne left them in. Yeah, and now they're roaming around. So and they probably didn't see the cops at all. I guess they had to not see the no, cops. No, no. So, so they wouldn't have brought them back. Yeah. So the they robbed the guests and they left. And then the the guests called the cops. The cops are there when I show up for work at seven a.m. I print the pictures, whatever, and they the cops leave. So the robbers they were gone. And they had no idea that the police were ever there. So then they come back just thinking everything's hunky dory. I guess they had regrets or remorse, or maybe they wanted to rob them <laughs> some more. The Christmas spirit. They, they realized <laughs> it was Christmas. And they felt awful. Yeah. Like all those like old like Norman Rockwell paintings started like flashbacking through their heads and they started thinking about how their like, their parents this is wrong. actually their their parents actually <laughs> did do their best. And they just like, <laughs> you know, and they instantly just, you know, go yeah. to Christmas pass and all that stuff and just full on like, uh, you know, Jimmy Stewart or way back into the hotel at return of, uh, I don't know, all the stolen items. Yeah. But, you know, I glance down and I definitely see that this man has a gun in the front of his pants. So I don't think that they were there to spread holiday cheer. I mm-hmm. think that they were they were definitely going to do something else. So I get them into the lobby. I go to the back room, which is behind the office. It's where we would do the laundry. There's big commercial washer and dryer, but there's a little closet. It was always a thousand degrees in that closet because it was like the back of the dryer. It was like the access panel for the dryer. Right. And I locked myself in there and called 911. There I am. It's a thousand degrees. I'm at the back of the dryer and uh, I'm just praying that he doesn't like, because if he would have jumped over the front desk, he would have been able to get into that back room. And I knew that he had a gun. And I thought like, if the cops come and he tries to flee, he's coming back here and I might be getting fucking shot on Christmas at my job. So I'm waiting for the cops and they did not play. I think 30 cops showed up, guns drawn, but in that time that I had gone into the back room and locked myself in, they fled. I think they knew that the chick in the glittery Santa hat was on to them. So they were gone. But fortunately, the cops were able to catch up with them that time and they, they were captured. So had they not come back to spread holiday cheer or whatever the hell they were there doing, I don't know that they would have gotten caught, but it was terrifying. And you would think that would be enough to make me leave. But It's not like I'm sitting on, you know, a huge life savings that I could just quit my job. Obviously, I have to call my manager and and let them know what the hell is going on. And these people, they're not anywhere near me. You know, they're a management company that's halfway across the country. And he's just like, all right, well, fill out an incident report. Right. the the, The understatement of the year. That yeah. is insane. I wanted to make more jokes, but I started getting kind of serious there when you're, <laughs> you know, I was just like, this is no, kind of I think pretty it, awkward. But looking back, it is just so ridiculous. It's just so ridiculous what I would deal with on the day to day at that place. Like I always said when I worked there that I wanted my own reality show, like the bullshit that comes out on these streaming channels. Any idiot can have a reality show. And I just never understood why I didn't because it was just unbelievable what you would see day in and day out at this place. Unbelievable. And that's our cold open for this episode right there. So <laughs> statement. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's basically what we're kind of trying to do here. Yeah. But that's nuts. Yeah. I mean, I was on such a first name basis with the police force at that time that they had a key to get wow. into the hotel. So they came in and they came into the back office and they said, Sarah, are you in here? And I knew I recognized the officer's voice. So I came out of the closet and uh, I might have been a little hysterical at that point. But 
Yeah, I was actually on a texting basis with the lead detective for the township at that point. And he would text me mugshots and be like, is this guy with you? And I'd be like, yeah, <laughs> I swear to God, I swear to God. I'd be like, yeah, he's in room 301. Come get him. Jeez. Um, yeah, I had, you know, he would like bring me coffee and stuff like because I was I was <laughs> like, like one totally of these detective like... shows, like one of those detective shows. <laughs> Every day you go to work, you end up in a blanket sitting on the back of a squad car <laughs> holding one of those, those those blue and white Greek coffee cups. Yep. Yep. That's me. That's me shivering, slightly yeah, shivering. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 16 more years of retirement. <laughs> oh, my God. But there was a uh, one time this guy shows up and I did not recognize him. And he was like way he was like a U.S. Marshal or FBI agent or something. And he slides a manila folder across the <laughs> front desk with, and opens it up. And he's like, I know this guy is here. I know he's on the first floor. He's like, here's how this is going to happen. You're going to well, take for all you down know, there. This is some right, Rus- Russian right. mafia. And I'm like, like, you don't know this yeah. guy. This guy's from like, Brighton Beach. Sir, I'm like, sir, I need to see some credentials. Like, I think I'm big shit because I'm a manager. And he shows me a badge. Rob, I don't know if yeah, it was real or not. What the hell do I know? Uh, yeah. And that's like, you don't even think about in your lifetime being in those situations where you're like, let me see your badge. And then you're yeah. like, how do I know that's real? Whatever. Yeah. I'm pretty sure with like a fake badge and a clipboard, I could get into most places. Like you just walk in, yeah. like I own the place and be like, yeah, I'm here to inspect uh, such and such. And here's my badge. And we'll here get we you go. A pair of, uh, yeah. I'm going to get you a pair of aviators. We'll be good to right. go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> but this guy comes in and I guess he's legit. He's like, he's like, you're going to walk me to the room. I'm going to call this guy's cell phone. If we hear it ringing inside behind the door. He's like, you're going to swipe. Wait, so you're in feet. on this now? This is like a yeah, movie? I'm, like, like a, I'm like a some... part. He hired me on the spot. <laughs> uh, it's, like, it's, like, it's like some rom-com yeah. buddy cop, like somebody like you weren't it's supposed bizarre. to be there, but you're there and now you're part of this whole thing and you got to stick it out yeah. to the end. And, oh my God. Yeah. This is so ridiculous. he's like, okay, so <laughs> you're going to, yeah, <laughs> I'm at the office, <laughs> which is in like the middle of this hotel. Dude, how do you and write this up on your resume for things that, like under you which can't. bullet point you is can't. this on your resume when you're applying for new jobs? General manager, um, uh, duties and tasks as a general manager, helping yeah. the FBI arrest the uh, top 10 most wanted suspects in room 301. I will put the link to this episode on my resume going forward. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you got to do, yeah. <laughs> so he's like. We're going to get to this door if his phone's ringing inside, which I know it will be, because apparently this dude's like staking out. I didn't know. He's like, you're going to swipe your key and walk away, you know, to like open the door. You know how he was staking out? Fucking Wayne. Wayne let him. <laughs> God damn it, Wayne. <laughs> Sitting in a parking lot for three days and you didn't even know. Yeah. So he's like, swipe your key and walk away. Do you understand what I said? I'm like, swipe my key and walk away. <laughs> this like, sound like this sound now sounds like a bad movie. Like yeah, it doesn't even sound good. Just, like this dialogue is something I can write. It's just getting crazier, crazier. I'm like, man, I don't even know you. Where's my like lead detective that I'm used to working with on cases? Well, well, I want to know. Like, so this this all starts this all starts at the front desk, right? Yes. So then what are you thinking as you're walking down a hallway to this room? I think I'm peeing a little bit because (laughs) I had seen the dude in question and he was not someone you would fuck with. And now I'm fucking with him. Essentially, I'm helping this guy. Yeah, he's not splitting hairs. Like, no, I'm like, oh, man. So we're down at the end of the hallway. Now, the ends of the hallway had cameras right there. I'm like, at least whatever's about to happen to me, everything's on camera. (laughs) Like, I hope so, this manager. <laughs> what? It just, it just means like everything that's happening is going to end up on World Star. That's all that means. That doesn't mean anything <laughs> yeah. else. Like, it's just going to be some weird internet. No, you know. like, all I could think is like, at least my family will have proof and be able to get uh-huh. my my fucking uh, life insurance. You know, that's, that's, yeah. that's those are the thoughts. That's those totally. Those are the thoughts that are going through your head is walking down a hallway when you show yeah. up for work at a job that pays not yeah, that much yeah. money. And, right. <laughs> okay. So, um, great. We, uh, we're at the door and. You know, this guy with a badge makes a phone call and sure as shit, we hear ringing behind the door. And I'm like, all right, my time to shine. I got to swipe my key and walk away. So I did. I swipe my key. I'm booking down the hallway. I'm like, I'm out. And Imagine if it I... didn't work. Like, you know, how many times somebody goes <laughs> like to the jingling. thing and you're just like six times, it just doesn't work. And you got to gotta go back to the front desk and be like, my card's not working. And then the people at the front desk are like, oh, really? And then they're like, do you want two cards? As I guess I want to. And then they'll hold the whole like, rigmarole. Like, how many times nothing, have you had like, to redo somebody's card? Oh, I wish I had a penny, a fraction of a penny for every time I had to. I'd still be a millionaire. But like my keys, I got like metal office keys and my, you know, magnetic, like little credit card swipey key. Mm-hmm. 
I'm not quiet about it. My fucking metal keys are like clanging up against like, and so whatever. I see the green light. I just go down the hallway and I just hear a ruckus behind me. And I'm like, let me get back to the camera and try to see like what the hell is going on. So this guy didn't call for backup or anything either? No, he's one dude. Dude, he's I don't think this dude. is a real agent. This is not That's a real agent. That's what I'm saying. This is so bullshit, man. You is... totally just helped some dude get fucking whacked. Murdered, right? By some fucking and, crew. At right? best, this guy was a private <laughs> detective. At worst, this guy's like the husband of the, he's having an affair with somebody or something like that. Listen. And fucking Wayne. All of this. Not fucking doing anything <laughs> to help the situation. <laughs> just hanging out, having another drag, letting everybody in the back gate. Oh. Listen, these are all things running through my head as I'm literally running down the hall. I'm like, what if this guy's not legit? And I'm like, you know what? I better call the detective that I'm used to working with because I have a really bad feeling in my stomach right now. I get back to the office and my first thought is I got to alert the rest of the staff like what's going on right now and to stay the hell away from that room because oh, I don't know what's about to go down. So I get everyone like in that back room and I'm like, just sit tight. There's something going on down on the end of the first floor and uh, we don't want to be a part of it. So how do you get everybody back to the room? Do you guys have like a bat signal or something or? We had some really high tech walkie talkies. Oh, okay. <laughs> run! Run! Everybody run! <laughs> I should have had like a code, code fake agent. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I hear someone. Because when you're in the back, even though there's like a commercial washer and dryer, you can kind of hear when somebody's out front. So I peek my head out and it's my guy. It's the detective that I'm like used to working with. Right. And I'm like, yo, he's like, they got him. Good job, Sarah. I'm like, oh, thank God this is legit. Like, <laughs> oh, God, like I'm so relieved right now. Then so you see him walking away, the guy. Who, yes. who broke into the room in handcuffs, not the actual guy. No. Like, you know what I mean? like, like, <laughs> no. like this guy's congratulating you because it's like they got him, Sarah, but he doesn't know that you were actually helping the criminal in this situation. Oh, my God. No, that is not what happened. They did walk by the criminal right past me and he looked through me. I felt ice on my bones. I thought he's just going to he knows he knows he knows I helped. So they walk him by. And they're at this point now, there's like cars I've never seen before, unmarked cars, cops, like every freaking township and district in the area. I'm like, holy shit, who is this guy? The detective that I'm like friendly with, he comes back in. I'm like, what is going on? And he's like, oh, yeah, he's like, you know, this kingpin like drug dealer. I'm like, OK, he turns to another officer and he's like, did anyone frisk him? And they're like, no. He was sleeping when the guy went into the room. And he, when when they walked him by the front desk, all he was wearing was like cut off sweatpant shorts, no shirt, nothing. So the detective that I, you know, was used to, he goes, no, 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 no. And he goes outside. Rob, he comes back in a minute later and puts a little gun on my front desk. Rob. What? Yeah. He goes... <laughs> This was tucked up under his nutsack. I go, oh well, my get it. God. <laughs> I'm like, get it off the front I'm like, well, get it off the front desk. That's disgusting. So just imagine, just imagine in your life that you're the kind of guy that sleeps with a nutsack gun. And he's not even staying at a nice hotel. I mean, <laughs> right? I you're a kingpin and you're not, and you're staying at a dump. <laughs> Don't you own what a yacht? Fuck? Dude, that's insane. <laughs> it's uh, Everything about that is scary. There's just two incidences where I had a brush with gun violence at my job that I did not sign up for guns. You know, I'm not working at a at a freaking hunting store. I'm at a hotel. I don't need to see guns. I don't want them like near me when I'm just trying to earn a living. Right. So just just ridiculous shit on the day to day basis there. Unbelievable. I know that we keep it light and funny here, but on the real, I definitely had PTSD from that position. Yeah. And you would think they would be decent and offer me some sort of like counseling or or something, but it never happened. They just worried about like, well, make sure those incident reports get filled out. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I was going to say that. And I was kind of thinking when you were talking about all this, my previous job was awful. It was the worst job I've ever had. And that job was like nothing compared to what you just mentioned. You know what I mean? Like I feel so awful even for saying it now and like apologizing for it because like I just had like uh, my boss was a real asshole. You know what I mean? Like that was it. I had to work like oh. sometimes I had to work like 55 hours a week or something like that, you know, and I was under a lot of stress and hurt working with these very kind of uh, VIP kind of people. And it makes everything very stressful. And like your job was kind of on the line because they were very, uh, they were not shy about firing people, but 
you know, I never had to have some guy's, you know, nutsack gun put on my desk or anything like that, you know. That is the title of this episode right there, Nutsack nutsack Gun. gun. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I I got out of that property not too long before the pandemic. And I just remember being so, so grateful that I was not there during the pandemic because the people that I did keep in touch with that said it was just absolutely slammed. There was a waiting list. And that's what it was. I mean, you think about these hotels... There's no credit check. All your Mm -hmm. utilities are paid for. You can pay week to week. You can pay month to month. It's the perfect kind of place for someone who doesn't have credit or, you know, the housing too. It's just so, it's ridiculous. And this was like a good, you know, I will say there were like traveling construction crews and traveling nurses that stayed there, like where that kind of property really worked well for them. Traveling drug kingpins. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so and we we're pet friendly, you know, like you could bring the whole freaking family and your and your dogs and cats too. your baby tiger. Yeah, yeah. You see those people behind the desk. You have no idea what they have gone through or seen or how many nutsack guns have been laid on the desk that day. So just be as kind as you can to them. We're working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even on holidays. And sometimes a, even a glittery Santa cap can't keep you from getting a, a gun in your face. Thank you, everybody. And that concludes our Christmas episode for 2022. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Insiders. It means the world to us. Are you a hotel, hospitality, or tourism industry insider with a story to share? Great. We want to hear from you. Go to theinsiders.com and click on Be Our Guest to submit your story for the chance to be our guest on an episode of The Insiders Podcast. Once again, for more information, go to theinsiders.com. 